This case takes place in the United Kingdom on the 3rd of May 2019. Ellie Gould was a 17 year old who lived in Cannes with her mother and father who both described her as a beautiful and caring daughter. Ellie is said to have had a huge love for animals but in particular she had a passion for horses. She was a horse rider and even competed in local shows and cross country events. Her parents would later talk about her dreams of joining the mounted police and that she was very excited about her next step in life. She was also an A-level student in year 12. It was here where she began a relationship with a 17 year old named Thomas Griffiths. Both Ellie and Tom had known each other since they were in year 7. And it's said that Ellie had been chasing him for some time and was ecstatic when they finally made their relationship official in January of 2019. Although the relationship didn't last too long. Around May time, Ellie came to the conclusion that she needed to prioritise her education. Thomas had made numerous attempts to try and stop Ellie from revising and focusing on her education. This is something known as educational sabotage and is done as a form of control as if Ellie were to fail her courses she would become more reliant on Tom. If you haven't already it's worth looking into educational sabotage as I do know I have some viewers who are in their teens and learning about it could be helpful. Ellie also realised that Tom was a little bit too intense for her. He would often talk about how he wanted to have kids and get married. He would also become irritable if she was ever busy or seeing friends. Ellie's mother even told her that Thomas seemed to be a very possessive person and told her that she didn't think he was a right fit. On the 2nd of May 2019, Ellie told some of her friends that she was thinking about putting an end to the relationship with Tom and that she would be speaking to him that day. So Ellie sent a text message to Tom telling him how she was feeling and that she believed it would be best to end their relationship. Tom began frantically messaging Ellie, begging her not to end the relationship and that they should meet and sort things out. But Ellie had made up her mind. She sent a message to her friends saying that they had broken up and that Tom had not taken it well. The following day, on the 3rd of May, Tom went to school to look for Ellie. He was supposedly looking for Ellie so he could speak to her and convince her to get back together with him. However, Ellie wasn't at school, she was instead studying at home. Tom began asking around, inquiring if anyone had seen or heard from Ellie. Eventually, someone told him that she was at home studying. Upon learning this, Tom left the school premises and went home. When he got home, he changed his white trainers to a pair of black trainers and put on a black hoodie. Whilst he was getting changed, his mother came home. To avoid being caught, he hid from her until she left. Once she left, he stole her car keys and drove her car to Ellie's home. Tom would later claim that he had gone to Ellie's house to study and to try and fix their relationship. However, after Ellie stuck to her decision, Tom became enraged. He began to strangle Ellie. Ellie had done her best to try and fight Tom off and had scratched his face and neck leaving some visible marks. Tom then retrieved a kitchen knife and proceeded to stab Ellie in the neck multiple times. He stabbed her a total of 13 times in the neck. Ellie quickly succumbed to her injuries and passed away from blood loss. After she was dead, Tom attempted to cover his tracks. He removed the knife from Ellie's neck and began wiping the fingerprints from the handle. He then put the knife back into Ellie's neck and wrapped her hand around the handle. He did this to try and make it look like Ellie had taken her own life. He grabbed some cloths and began wiping up the blood spatters, again to make the murder appear to be self-inflicted. Ellie had also made plans with a friend for that day. A friend who was also named Ellie was supposed to pick her up and the two were going to go to school later on. But after Tom killed Ellie, he picked up her mobile phone and used her fingerprint to unlock it. He then pretended to be Ellie and messaged her friend telling her not to bother picking her up. Tom then fled from the scene, taking with him a black bin bag filled with the cloths he had used to clean up the crime scene. 
He went home, got changed into some new clothes, and placed the bloodstained clothing into the plastic bag and hid them in a wooded area near his house. After this, he sent a message to a group chat. In this group chat were a number of Ellie's friends. In this message, he said that he had been struggling with the breakup with Ellie, and as a result of the stress, he had clawed his own face and neck and left a number of marks. All of Ellie's friends comforted Tom and offered to be there for him if he ever needed to talk, totally unaware of the horrific things he had done to their friend. Tom also sent a number of messages to Ellie's phone asking where she was, trying to make it look like he hadn't seen her that day. At around 3pm, Ellie's father returned home from work. He walked through the front door and into the kitchen. When speaking about finding Ellie, her father said, I thought at first she had an accident, that she'd reached for something in the cupboard, slipped, and banged her head as she fell. But there was blood splattered all around the kitchen, too much for that to have happened. It was horrific. The rest is a blur. I phoned 999 and I heard myself say that I thought Ellie was dead. The operator was telling me how to resuscitate her, but she was already lying cold and stiff on the floor. I knelt alongside her. There was blood all around her neck and head. I shouted at her, wake up, wake up. I called my next door neighbours for help. I phoned my wife Carol. I said, Ellie's had an accident, come home and drive safely. Ellie's mum Carol returned home to discover that her daughter was dead, but they were unaware that Ellie had been murdered. An investigation was soon underway to determine what happened. The police found Ellie laying face down with a knife in her neck and her hand on the handle. They quickly realised that they were dealing with a murder and informed Ellie's parents of this tragic news. Upon hearing this, they believed they knew exactly who was responsible and mentioned to the police that Ellie had just broken up with her boyfriend, Tom. The police began asking those who lived close to where Ellie lived if they had seen anyone around the house. One person came forward and stated that they had seen someone who matched the height and age of Tom. So, Tom was brought into the station and questioned. At the station, investigators quickly noticed that he had scratches on his face. With a motive, someone seeing him at the crime scene and defence scratches to his face, the police arrested Tom under the suspicion of murder. Despite the evidence, Tom denied that he had anything to do with the death of Ellie. And now, the police needed to build up a strong enough case and prove without a shadow of a doubt that Tom was indeed guilty, and it didn't take too long. Tom's mobile phone had pinged to a cell tower near his house, and then near Ellie's house. This showed that he was around that area when Ellie was murdered. CCTV evidence from a bus was also gathered, which showed Tom driving away from Ellie's home around the time he would have killed her. When Tom was confronted with this evidence, he said that he wasn't the one driving. Disgustingly, despite the overwhelming amount of evidence, he still continued to lie to the police and told them that he had nothing to do with her death. The police, of course, didn't believe him at all, and Tom was charged with the murder of Ellie. Then, the police did something rather clever. They looked at the Wi-Fi router in Tom's home and found that he had connected to the router after returning home from killing Ellie. But shortly after coming home and connecting to the Wi-Fi, he left the house again for 18 minutes. As I said earlier, near where Tom lived is a wooded area. The police suspected that he may have discarded the clothing he wore when he murdered Ellie in the wooded area. They theorised that he took a 9 minute walk into the woods, through the clothing, and then walked 9 minutes back. The police timed how long it would take to walk 9 minutes from Tom's house into the woods, and pretty much 9 minutes into the walk, they discovered a black bag filled with bloody clothing and bloody cloths. After this, Tom made a half confession. He claimed he had gone to Ellie's house that morning to study with her, but that they had begun to argue. Tom told the police that he remembers choking Ellie during the argument, but then blacking out, and claimed that he hardly remembered a thing that happened. At a plea hearing on the 29th of August 2019, Tom pleaded guilty to the murder of Ellie. 
However, he still maintained that he didn't remember how he killed her, and still maintained that he blacked out. On the 8th of November, Tom was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 12 years and 6 months. At the hearing, Tom read out a statement. In this statement he said, I'm so sorry. I know my apologies and explanations will never be enough, but I hope in time I can show how truly sorry I am. It's reported that as the letter was read, Ellie's mother Carol stared at him and shook her head. When speaking of the murder, Ellie's mother said, My husband came home in the afternoon and found his beloved daughter in a pool of blood on our kitchen floor. It's horrendous, and the sentence for that is just twelve and a half years. Twelve and a half years for the brutal murder of our precious daughter. Tom could be out by the time he's thirty and carry on with his life, and he stole Ellie's life from her. He stole her life from us. He's never held his hands up and admitted it, he just says he can't remember what he did. He's evil and he's dangerous. After the murder of Ellie, Carol successfully campaigned for tougher sentences for teenage killers. This is known as Ellie's Law. This means that when teenagers commit serious crimes, they will be treated more like adults. Carol has also highlighted another issue with the law. When speaking to the BBC, she said, the law, as it stands at the moment, is that if you take a knife onto the street and kill somebody, the starting point for sentencing is 25 years. But, if you pick up a knife in the home and murder somebody, the starting point for sentencing is 15 years, which is a 10 year difference. And highlighted how women are more likely to be killed in the home, and how their killers will get a lesser sentence. The fact that Ellie's father was the one who discovered her is something that I found to be truly heartbreaking. I can't even imagine how someone is able to carry on after seeing such a horrendous sight. When speaking about what he saw, Ellie's father said, The image of Ellie lying there on the floor has haunted me ever since that afternoon. It fills my thoughts when I go to sleep, and it hijacks my mind when I try to go about my day.